senior. This match is uh, these two wrestlers, uh, Peters and Canellis from Iowa City West, have uh, wrestled each other for 11 6 win by Canellis from Iowa City West in the gold singlet. These guys like to go up with high. <laughs> There's going to be some action here. So, yeah, Canellis made the move, and uh, Peters uh, didn't, didn't wait for the whistle, tried to jump back behind him, even though they both had gone out of bounds. Yeah, that, that's part of the reason why we kind of selected this. These guys are. Be surprised if they don't go at it, particularly early in the match when they both got a little energy. Both were place winners a year ago. Canellis was sixth. Peters the fourth place finisher in 2003. Usually what happens, Tim, in some of these matches here, if somebody doesn't get it early, that, that lock-up situation, one or the other will have some respect for the their opponent in that position and move away from it. Oh, there's a headlock now by Canellis. That's tight. Yes, it is. Peters trying to roll through, but that's awful tight. Peters actually worms his way out of that, but that's awful tight. Look at, there's the fall. And just like that, Alex Canellis of Iowa City West has picked up a championship, cinched it up, held into the mat, and picks up the 3A, 215-pound title. Boy, that's thunder, Jimmy. <laughs> I was about ready to say somebody's going to have some respect, but right then, uh, Canellis was able to hit the headlock. Boy, he was really tight. <laughs> There's a... Uh, I told you I wanted to see a coach go down. Oh, I tell you what. Oh, Mark, Coach Mark Ryland of Iowa City West just got planted. Watch, watch this. Watch the, the headlock final. here. All right. Coming in. He feels Peters moving in. Double overhook situation. Boom. Just sags on that headlock there. Boy, that's tight at that point. And uh, just balance there, keeping your right. balance. He, he got two people this time. He got, he got Peters, and, and a little later on, he got his coach. <laughs> That's a two-fisted celebration. So Alex Canellis, the champion. Big situation over here. We're going to end up moving to the two-way mat. Dane Pape, who was a finalist last year going up against Tyler Blum. And uh, Blum is a, is a uh, junior. We're looking junior. He's got... Double leg situation that he got there, scored. Paid from McQuilkett on top there. Bloom and, uh, excuse me, uh, paid from McQuilkett on the underside and Bloom of Atlantic in the black and uh, yellow. This is a rematch of last year's uh, semifinal uh, bout here in 03 that uh, Dane Pape was able to win three to two. Wait, uh, Tyler Bloom just involved in all types of activities here. Black and gold single here. He's just a, a big guy. Left-handed pitcher, I guess. He's 13 All-State pitcher. Six foot, well over 6'5", I believe. All-State first team in football, defensive end, and actually defensive lineman and uh, uh, tight end. Tell you what, man football. That eight-man game's got a lot of offense in it. Yeah, so you got to run a lot, quite a bit in eight-man football exactly. to run people down. So I tell you what, Bloom is a is a nice-looking kid for 215, slender and and uh, you know, tall. And I tell you what, uh, Dane Pape, brother of a three-time state champion Cole Pape, who's over at Iowa. I mean, his body a little bit deceptive there. He does some nice things there. Passes the elbow, shoots low on shots. Just a quick reminder of the 1A match up above there. Nathan Plune, Plone, I should say, of Woodbury Central in the blue leggings, I guess you'd have to say. The blue singlet as well. And Michael Buckland of Colfax Mingo on top there in the orange. And it's uh, Buckland leading at 7-2 to two with uh, well, four seconds now left in the second period. Big guy is just uh, a lot of... Looking for that big horse move where he can throw somebody across the arena. Well, you see uh, Buckland over there. He's got a nice 
looking high. Normally with the, with the larger guys is that uh, they've learned to wrestle at some of the lighter weights and then they move up and get a little bit bigger. And that's where that's why I just love with this 215 pound weight class. It really encourages the guys that are out for football to, to, to uh, stay out for the sport, not worry about cutting weight as much weight anyway. And, Bloom, Bloom still leads it three to nothing here. 44 seconds in the second period of this two-way bout. And over here, it's uh, all basically Bloom 3-0. Basically, he's just moving in. And for his frame, he's able to get really low on guys on, on low shots. I mean, he gets down to the ankle, and, and he's a good half a head taller than the guy definitely is being paid. But, he does find a way to get to the ankle. Easily 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. Yeah, I've heard 6'7", so. Yeah. You know, when you're that big and you're a baseball pitcher, left-hander, all right, I'm sure you can bring it. They're, they're diving. And nobody's going to charge the mound. <laughs> that's, that's a pretty good guess. Two-point takedown there, and then Tate does a nice job of uh, pulling it out, and referee Rodney Earlywine is going to basically go no points. And I think that's a good call, right? I think that's a good call. I didn't quite have control there, and Tate did a nice job of squaring his hips off. But there again, you see the athletic ability of Bloom. He's able to shoot to both sides. Nice shot right there. Tate really doesn't have a, a clear idea of which side he's going to come to, and that's why kind of crossed him up there. Threw his uh, curveball that time. Flown in the 1A match is uh, in trouble against Michael Buckland of Colfax Mingo. It's now 15 to 2 as time winds down in the third period. The 2A match much closer, still stuck on 3-0. Tyler Bloom out in front. Working on that arm pretty hard. Yeah, here's what I, I really like when I saw from him. He just can ride and control and uh, force the bar arms. Working the wrist to the far side and trying to bar the head. Yeah, and we'll try to probably try to come out, but you can see Dane Pape is really not letting him do that with his left shoelaces there. He's making it difficult for him to cast out to the side, so. Kind of making it look like Bloom is parallel riding, so here's a stack situation. Now, I can believe Pape has the wrist. No, I guess he doesn't. He's got this thing inside leg. He needs to come up. He comes up to create a scramble situation, get the reversal. One minute left in the third period. Michael Buckland is the 1A champion. You can see there on the insert of Colfax Mingo. A 15-2 win for Michael Buckland. Fifth the last two seasons. He's a champion this year in his senior go. Back with this match here. 4-2 here. Tyler Bloom from Atlantic. 40 seconds left. Surprised it. Oh, nice. You faked one direction, came back to the single leg on the other side here. He's got plenty of room to be able to score here. Just love the way he set that up, though. He set, that's, that's like a 103-pounder moving out there. Yeah, that was great quickness, too. 20 seconds left in the period. Yeah, he shot in there like a ball of lightning. Yeah, he just faked one direction and came the other way. Right and took the left. Exactly. 4-2, 14 seconds. Both men are going to be up. It's up to Pape to answer here. Probably try to go hard with a headlock or some sort of throw. Stall warning. Ten seconds. Room has been warned for stalling, but that's not really any effect of the match. Takedown attempt here by Pape. Tyler Room, the state champion. I just get the feeling, Tim, that he could be successful with anything that he decides to do athletically here. Well, and the long list of accomplishments you mentioned, just about everywhere he goes, too. Yeah. Tyler Bloom of Atlantic, fifth a year ago as a champion as a junior. There's a leap. Didn't take the, didn't take his coach out, though. Patrick Williams was able to hang on and keep his feet that time. He got a little support by the...
And now to the award stand for the 215-pound weight class medal winners brought to you by the Principal Bank. Presenting the Class 1A 215 awards, Coach Brian Poulter of Koufax Mingo. Eighth place, Garrett Kiley, Eagle Grove. Seventh place, Ryan Mark, Terrell Lakeman. Sixth place, Eric Hogel, Clarion Goldfield. Fifth place, Matt Jorgensen, Pocahontas area. Fourth place, Zach Wilker, Central L. Cater. Third place, Kevin Trulinger, Mount Air. Runner-up, Nathan Plain, Woodbury Central Mobile. And the Class 1A 215 champion from Colfax Mingo, Michael Buckland. And we're coming back as things begin to wind down at this year's Iowa High School State Wrestling Championships. More after this from your local station. I run a business, and this cell phone is basically attached to my ear. Hello? Yep. Good work. Bye. I travel all over. If I need a quick cut before a meeting, I find a great clips. They're everywhere. It's a nice, clean cut every time. We're the best in the business. I like the prices, too. I have never forgotten the value of a dollar. Great clips. Great haircuts. Every time, everywhere. Nadell is where customers send their friends. As a GE Showcase dealer, Archer's has almost every GE appliance available. And right now, take advantage of great deals on every one. Like $25 off all dishwashers, $50 off all ranges, $75 off refrigerators, and $100 off washers and dryer pairs. Plus, get double the manufacturer's warranty. No interest financing for 12 months and free delivery in most areas. At Archer's Home Center in Adel, where customers send their friends. Presenting the Class 2A with 215-pound awards, Coach Patrick Williams of Atlantic. Eighth place, Toby Jacobson, Harlan. Seventh place, Aaron Haddenfeld, Solon. Sixth place, Kyler Laffler, Benton Van Horn. Fifth place, Adam Robards, Okaboji Milford. Fourth place, Trent Harden, Van Buren, Piasaqua. Third place, Nick Olson, Esterville Lincoln Central. Runner-up, Dane Pate, Makokata, and the Class 2A 215-pound champion from Atlantic, Tyler Bloom. We've got more of the high B taste of the tournament. Joined now by Jay Borchelle of Linmore, wins your third straight championship. How was the march towards this title? Um, oh, just felt, feels just as good as it did the first time. What's next for you? Just wake up tomorrow and go back at it, get the fourth one. Well, congratulations and good luck. Thank you. Presenting the Class 3A 215-pound awards, Coach Mark Ryland of Iowa City West. Eighth place, West Lane, Waterloo West. Seventh place, Bo Knock, Ames. Sixth place, Zach Scott, Des Moines, Lincoln. Fifth place, Avery Rogers, Marshalltown. Fourth place, Jesse Smith, Southeast Polk Runnels. Third place, Tyler Mansfield, Decora, North Winnesheek. Runner-up, Dan Peters, Clinton. And the 3A 215-pound champion from Iowa City West, Alex Canellis. We've got the Outstanding Wrestler Award plus the Team Hardware to be handed out, so don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Say that smoking is a choice. What choice does she have? 